Sometimes, data retrieved from backends is not structured perfectly for your reporting needs. For example, web services or MongoDB backends don't typically allow you to execute complex queries from the client side, so the structure of result data can't be changed easily. Using the Federation data source, you can apply transformations and other operations to one or more data sources, creating a differently shaped result or combining information. The following demo illustrates this with JSON and Excel data sources. Other data source types like SQL are also supported. I prepared a report for this demo that uses master detail JSON sample data. If you work with JSON data, perhaps downloaded from web services or retrieved from a document database like MongoDB, you may find structures like the nested trips collection in this example. The name of the report is Reshaping JSON, which indicates what I'll do next. I'll reshape the source data to unfold and flatten the nested collection. I activate the Report Explorer tool window and right-click the data sources node. I add a data source and choose Data Federation on the first wizard page. The second page lists the existing JSON data source. A new federated query can utilize any existing sources for its definition, even when federation sources depend on each other. I click the Add Query button in the bottom left corner. The Query Builder knows four different query types, and you should select the correct one first. Join is the first choice, which allows you to perform a SQL-style join across multiple data sources. I'll demonstrate this a little later in the video. Union and Union All are useful if you have multiple data sources of equal shape and you would like to combine the content. Union removes duplicate data rows as part of the process, while Union All leaves them in place. Transform is the query type I'll demonstrate first, so I switch to this option now. The structure of the JSON data source is displayed in the top panel, while the bottom panel shows the result of the selected options. Currently, they are the same. However, the trips column allows me to check the transform option, and you see the result right away. The fields from the nested trips collection are pulled up to the parent type, and their names indicate this with a prefix. Note that the wizard-generated transformation is a combination of unfolding and flattening. The collection is unfolded to determine the set of result rows, and each row is flattened so that child and parent properties are included on the same level. These two steps may be visible to you when you use the Federation data source from code while the wizard handles them automatically. The final setting I can consider changing for the transformation is the alias column, but I'm happy with the default. I click OK to confirm, and you can see that a new query is now included underneath the node Federated Queries. I can change the name of this query in a moment. For now, it mirrors the name of the primary original data source it's based on. It would be possible to add more queries while I'm in this dialog, but I click Finish now. In the field list, you can see the new data source, and the fields appear as expected when I expand the list. Note that the context menu for the Federation data source includes the item Manage Queries. And in this dialog, you can change the names of queries, edit their definitions, or add new ones. To make use of the new data source, I delete the detail report now, as well as the table from the main level detail band. To replace the content, I select the fields for the car name, the trip start and end locations, and the trip length from the transform query, and drag them into the detail band. I use the Smart Tag menu of the report to assign the new data source. Note that the data member is set to refer to the query I created, since it's the only one in the Federation data source. If you have multiple queries, you need to select the correct one manually. I switch to the Preview tab now, and the report displays one row for each trip in the demo data. The first column repeats the car name as necessary, since the transformation duplicates this value. The process is similar to a right or outer join in a SQL database. Since the JSON data nests the trips inside each outer car object, it would not be possible without the Federation data source to generate a flat list of all trips. For this demo, I'll take things one step further and introduce a grouping. I'll group by intervals of the trip length, so I begin by introducing a calculated field in the Federation data source. 
This illustrates that the new data source works exactly like other ones, and you can take advantage of standard mechanisms like calculated fields on top of data federation. The new field I create will be called length group, and I assign an expression that calculates a group index. One unit of this index stands for 100 miles of trip distance. Now I use the Group and Sort tool window to establish a grouping based on the Length Group field. A header is added for the new group, and I add a label to it. I use another expression to display the trip length range for each group. I switch to the preview again. Now all the data rows on the first few pages have a trip length smaller than 100 miles. And the next group is 100 to 200 miles. This example demonstrates how the Federation data source can reshape data from an original source to a more convenient structure. And other report functionality like calculated fields and grouping remain available. For the next Federation scenario, I open the report Federation Master Detail. The designer shows a table layout with five columns. In the preview, however, only the first three of them are filled with data. The reason is that I have added two different data sources to the report, but only one of them is used at this time. You see data from the JSON file you already know, and all the cars in the demo data set are listed with their names and VINs. However, there is also an Excel data source configured for this report. I drag the Excel data source onto the report surface in the designer. This changes the binding. A quick check of the report smart tag menu confirms it, so that the report now loads data from an Excel file. In the preview, you see data in the last three columns of the table now. This example illustrates a common use case of Federation data sources. Imagine that the JSON data represents an application data layer. It could easily be loaded from a web service, for instance. This data includes the VIN numbers of the cars as identifiers, and an external file exists which uses the same identifiers to record a maintenance history of each car. Here's a quick look at the external file. You can see the VINs and the extra details. While this kind of situation is not something an application architect would arrange on purpose, it's not uncommon to see this in real applications. At this point, the developer of the report has a choice of two data sets with an overlapping field, the VIN. I add a Federation data source to the report now, and you can see the two original sources listed in the dialog. The first technique I'll show you to combine the two sources results in a master detail setup. I select all fields of both data sources in the dialog, and then I click the Manage Relations button. I drag the mouse from the field VIN in the JSON data source to the field VIN in the Excel data source. An arrow is displayed to illustrate the relationship I defined. The JSON source is now the parent of the Excel source with the VIN field used as a key. I confirm and leave the dialog. In the field list, you can see the structure of the new data source. The Federation data source includes a sub item for each of the associated data sources. And the item for the JSON data source has a sub item in turn for the related details in the Excel data source. I use the Smart Tag menu to configure the new Federation data source as the top level binding for the report. Then I make sure that the JSON data source sub item is selected for the data member property. Now I can add a detail report to the layout. And I drag the fields VIN date, and comment from the nested Excel source item over to the detail report. I format the columns to align with the top level headers, and I apply the same styles used in the main level detail band.
In the preview, you see the result. The detail report displays associated rows from the Excel sheet. You can confirm the relationships since the VIN is included on both levels. The fact that master and detail data have two different origins is completely invisible. To demonstrate the second technique to combine two underlying data sources, I open the report Federation Join. It includes the two data sources based on JSON and Excel files, but there is no Federation data source in this version of the report. I add a new Federation data source, but this time I use the Add Query button instead of selecting anything from the data source wizard. I leave the default query type selected, which is called Join. This allows me to create a table join similar to one in a relational database. I drag the Excel data source onto the design surface to the right of the dialog, and then I add the JSON data source to the same area. The Join Editor dialog appears, and I need to define the configuration of the join. I keep the join type Inner Join for this example, and I choose the VIN field on both sides to define the condition. I click OK, and you can see the join defined in the diagram. Using the tooltip, I can confirm that everything is set up as intended. Note that the demo data includes multiple rows for some VINs in the Excel source, which is why I defined the join in this direction. I check the boxes for five columns now, including all the ones in the Excel source, and the car and car ID fields from the JSON source. It's not necessary to include the VIN twice, but technically I could assign the second copy a unique name using the alias column in the bottom panel. I confirm the setup of the new data source, and once again, you can see the structure in the field list. Note that the sub item of the Federation data source, the query I created, is called by the name of its first source element by default. You can rename it in the Manage Queries dialog if you wish. I assign the new query as the report data source now and switch to preview. This time, all five columns of the report display data, and by comparing the ID values in the leftmost column, you can see that some cars occur more than once, as you would expect for the join I configured between the two data sources. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up, or you can leave questions and comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified whenever we release new content. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.